Hey everyone, this is Lisa from K9 Clips Dog Grooming Tips, and this is George. And George is a miniature terrier crossed with a Shih Tzu, and he is six months old. And this is his first groom, so he is quite fluffy. Um, he's quite uh, energetic on the ground, but he seems pretty nice and calm on the table here. So we're gonna see how he does for his first groom. His owner does trim his face a little bit. So he's used to the scissors around his face already. I'm just going to give a little trim. I'm going to be doing a scissor cut on him today. So keeping some length on him still. But there is some matting just around um, his inner front legs, kind of in the armpits. So let's see how he does. It's always. Um, guess on how uh, how any new dog is going to do with me for their first time. So when I am holding him, I'm holding him with these two uh, fingers. So, and then I'm holding at the back of the jawline so that I'm not putting any pressure on his throat. But I can still kind of move his head around. And... Um, have a little bit of control of the movement so I can kind of move him where I need to be but he can still move as well so it kind of lets both of us have a little bit of control there we go now you can kind of see his face so I'm just going to trim the other side up like that Just to give it some shape. And as you can see, I don't use any restraints, and I don't use them on any of my dogs that I grew. Even the guys that are a little bit squirmy or anxious. I just don't want to be here. Let's see, oh, we got some chain hair there. So as I said, I'll be doing a scissor cut on him. So I'm going to start um, um, with the face and then work to the feet and uh, bum area. And then I'm going to do the body all before the bath. But the, the face and feet and bum area and nails there are the hardest part to do generally on a dog. I like to kind of set the bar high, especially with puppies here. Because that uh, once I can get them to behave, which he's doing very good already. So if he was resistant, once I use my techniques on holding him, then he stays good for the rest of the groom. If you can get him kind of settled in at the beginning. So you kind of set the bar for him. Okay. Just getting my tweezers. So I just use regular tweezers. They're very good quality tweezers. I'm going to pluck his ears out here. They're kind of full. Hard to see. There we go, buddy. 
there's quite a bit of hair in there so i like just to pull a little bit out at a time so it's not too uncomfortable for the dog but there still is lots in there So that's just all in one ear. Put that over there so I can see how much is in this one because I think there's going to be quite a bit. These puppies can get well. Lots of hair in there, and you don't even realize it. So it makes them quite itchy. So this should help alleviate that itch and just also prevent uh, ear infections. There's nothing for that wax to stick into there. And there we go. So that was just all from one ear. You can see it's quite long. Okay, good boy. He's kind of slithered over here, trying to cuddle with me. I'll do the other side. They're long in there. So it uh, doesn't hurt when you pluck the hair out, but obviously it's a little annoying more than anything. Just probably feels fairly weird. So there's that ear. So again, still quite a bit as well in there. And it's quite long as well. There, that's got to feel better. Okay, so I'm going to just comb out his ears. I think they're all pretty good. So the owner's been doing really good at combing him out or brushing him out. But eventually his puppy fur will turn into adult hair as well. So the consistency or texture of it will change. And usually it's a little bit more prone to matting at that point. But it all depends on, because he's got a, a mix of Shih Tzu and Terrier in him. So it all depends. If he keeps a little bit more of the Terrier, um, it won't mat as much as if it was more Shih Tzu. So it all depends on when he gets a little older to see how it's going to turn out for, uh, for the consistency and you know, because some people can keep their dogs long and just do scissor cuts on them. There we go. I do a longer rounded cut on him. It kind of keeps that. Just going to layer that backwards a little bit. So it's not going to fall in his eyes. There we go. Sharp edge of it. Oh. Let me do a little more 
around it. There we go. Hard to see on the black dog, but uh, it looks really good. Okay, so I'm going to try starting with the feet here. This is where they sometimes get a little bit squirmy on me. <laughs> He's got big paws there. They're all buried in there. So... Trim that up, and again, we're going to be keeping his body longer, so I don't want to take too much off. Such a good temperament for him. For being uh, quite a energetic dog when he was getting dropped off he's doing really good on the table he was running around he's a very happy puppy but running around and wagging his tail and lots of energy so nice to see how uh, relaxed he is on the table and in here I'm just going to layer the feet kind of out. There we go. Okay, I'll use my little nail clippers here. This will help give him a little bit more grip as well. expecting to have a resistant puppy just because he was so full of energy but what a pleasant surprise I do have uh, lots of videos on my channel that I've collected and videotape and put on there for you guys um, and I have created playlists for everybody so that you can easily find them um, if you're looking for something specific if you don't know where to look just uh, you can send me a comment and I will try to help you find what you're looking for I do put fairly good titles on everything so even if you're looking for a specific breed um, I should be able to help you out with that Let's see. Got a little Duplon there. Yep. Right. just 
I'm going to get the back screw there. Good boy. All right. So he's going, doing pretty good. Oh, one of the nails is bleeding there. That's the benefits of the nice white table. Shows off if there's any ones that are bleeding, which is not uncommon for a dog's nail to bleed. As you can see, it didn't even uh, startle him when I did it. That's what happens lots of times. You'll, you'll cut the nails and then you'll notice after that one of them is bleeding because uh, the dog didn't have any reaction to it when you did it. Okay. So I just put the styptic powder on it or um, stop bleed. got some different names depending on what brand you buy um, but you just hold the nail in there and make sure it has good contact with the powder and uh, usually I push it in with my finger as well try my best to get the video but sometimes I get a little distracted here with the puppy So I really want to get a good look at that dew claw before I cut. Yeah. Hey. There we go. Good boy. He's such a good boy. All right. We're moving right along here. <laughs> you look how my fur's on that foot. <laughs> His little black paw, the white paw, and on his chin. Almost looked like a, on the beginning of the video, it looks like a little mustache was coming down just with the white outline there. I'm also doing a before and after video of him. So that'll be cute to see his first, uh, first groom, the transformation there. It'll be quite distinct. Just because we're taking so much off of him. He'll look like a completely different dog. I always tell the owners they'll come in as a puppy, but they leave as a teenager. From the baby to the teenager. All in one fell dog groom. Get this last foot done here. We're gonna have a big nap. I gotta find those nails. Oh, there's no do claw back here. Just making sure it's not trapped in all that fur. All right, so that was very uh impressive for a little puppy okay. so now i'm just gonna comb him out just to see what i got here oh yeah you're used to being combed eh it lays down good boy
a little bit of matting around the bump, but I'll be able to trim that out. So I'm not going to glue too much. And there's a little bit here as well. That looks like it has some tea stains on. here. As long as it comes out fairly easy and I don't worry about it too much. But basically I want to, uh, I don't want to uh, cause them too much discomfort. So there is some matting in this leg here um, which I should be able to cut out. And in his chest here. Again, I'll just, I think I'm going to use the thinning shears right there. Because there's not too much matting. So if I don't need to cut everything real short, I don't want to. So even though you're doing a scissor cut, it does take a little bit longer to prep it up there. So under his armpits, we're already aware that there is some matting. So the first round of the scissor cut, you have to make sure that you've gotten pretty much all the mats out. You know, and if you, if there are any mats, you're aware of where they are so that you can kind of determine what length you're going to go and what kind of look you're going to hope for in the end. Okay. So it's pretty, it's pretty just let her rip. So when you start, then you continue on taking that same amount off on the top and the sides you kind of have to fluff it up and again you're going on the side angle because you don't want to go this way because if you do that way you'll make it real choppy but if you go up and down on the sides it'll layer it nicely but again you're taking about the same amount off as you did on the top Kind of gives you that layering effect there. Just kind of this guy's doing so good. Inside the leg, I'm going to do a little bit shorter. Just because that's where all that wonderful stuff is prone to stick to. Plus, it is uh, prone to getting matted in there as well. Okay. So once you take the first kind of layer off there, you can comb out again. There's a little one there. Okay. Get a little bit of all those mats out. And I'm not too concerned about getting everything perfect right yet. Kind of want it to still poop out a bit. 
and layer. So you got to layer upwards and downwards because from the feet, you kind of want to layer it backwards from them. So they still look pretty poofy, but it's not going to have a whole bunch of stuff sticking to his pads or feet there. So you want to give it a natural flow. Okay. I know. Just layering under the belly a little bit. I know there's some matting in there. And usually the shoulders. Basically, I just keep going around and around the body. Oops, okay, there. There's a little mat there, but it just was hanging on by a thread. So. so I like to take all the bulk off here. And you kind of see what's left over. And although it looks like one of someone who hadn't seen the dog before, you know, the scissor cut is nice and long so it doesn't look in some cases like you've trimmed the dog to them. So it is very difficult to make it look natural and not choppy. So it does take a few tries, but you can, you will get better. Just like with anything, the more you do it, the better you'll get. And you learn along the way. I've been doing this for 16 years, so I do realize I make it look a little easier than it will be or seem when you start this task. And uh, George here is very well behaved. But that also comes with uh, regular brushing. So he's used to being groomed just by being brushed regularly. So anything you can do to get them used to this at an earlier age will help you down the road. Got some matting under there, so I'll see what I have to do after. I just want to try to keep the length for now. There's a little bit of matting in here. You always got to be careful when you're using your scissors where those tips are. Always 
get lots of comments on my scissors. But I assure you, I'm very careful. And uh, when I first started out, I wasn't this quick. You definitely have, it, there is quite a learning curve. But you do have a lot more control with scissors than clippers. Even if the dog's moving around a lot, I'm able to close them, move them away. But it's really watching the dog's face and their comfort level. And you learn more and more how to read them. As you work with them. Yeah. Oh. Doing? Okay, so I'm going to trim up the bum area here. We've got a little fluff going on and that one leg okay good i wasn't sure we've got some mats there or not okay bum area. I'm going to trim a little bit shorter than everywhere else. And again, that's where that everything likes to stick to that we don't want to stick. say for a puppy he is really good but again that goes back to uh, having him regularly groomed as in brushing from an early age you can definitely tell he's used to uh, his owner brushing him there you go. Good boy. all right so some of this stuff, um, I'll do a little bit more. Once I give them the bath, but I do want to check out these armpits. So the armpits are matted right to the skin in there. So I'm actually going to use a number 10. So it's really close. But because my number, I don't want to use, I can try with the number 7. Um, Finishing blade. I'll we'll see if I can get under it. And I sometimes find if the blade's a little bit longer, it can't get under the mat. And then if not, and then I do have the skip tooth blades, um, which I like for mats, but not in the armpit area because I can might be a catch from skin. This will be his first time with the clippers. Yeah, see, and I can't get under there. That's why I like to use the number 10, where I will be able to get nice and close. Yeah. Let's turn that a little bit for you. I'm just only taking what I have to. And so there's quite a bit of mat under there. So and it's all bunched together. So there'd be no way to get that out with scissors. I'm going to do the same with the other side here. You got to be very careful. When you go in those armpits, so you're making sure that you're going right for the skin. That's why number 10 is the best, especially if you're learning. And even if you're not, there's a lot of loose skin in there. And you don't have to worry about cutting um, any folds. So when the skin gets pulled out, right, it has 
it gets loose like that so that it's easy to grip. Just like ours. Stretches out. Okay, so I'm going to try to, uh, there's, there's a little one left in the middle, but of course I don't want to shave that. want to kind of hopefully be able to get it out just with this just a little one there on the front but I don't want to shave that one out either because it'll make it like a little bald spot I just want to kind of make it a little bit natural so on the front of his leg he has another one here it's okay I'm sorry I'm going to use the thinning shears as well, a little thicker than I thought it was. Okay. There we go. So that was on the front of the leg. I'll leave a little bit of a shorter spot in there, so I'll kind of layer the leg a little bit more here, so it kind of blends in a little bit better. And I can feel that he also has at the back of his armpit here a little bit of a thicker clump. And of course he did have surgery as well so even that short piece there might actually be from uh, where they shaved down to put the IV in this was kind of covered by the fur before so it's not necessarily on me there but it could be I guess okay let's see There, so we want to give it a natural look. Now I'm just going to trim this leg down because I had to trim the other one down because of the mat. So I want them to kind of look uniform, of course. You're never going to get it perfect because how it is now, and then once it's wet, and then once it dries, and then how he lays or even holds his tail up, it all change the, will change the look of it. So you're never going to get it perfect. Any cut on any dog, but your goal is basically make, make it look as cute as you can. All right. As you can see, it's taken me a little longer. It does, uh, with the scissor cuts, scissor cuts do take longer than, uh, than using the shaver as well. And they are a little more difficult to learn. And there's a match right in his foot here. Okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna check under his belly area. I know there were some mats there as well. Oh yeah, just right around here. I'm gonna shave those out with the tin and around where he pees. So that he's not peeing on his fur. And that's what this matting is. It kind of clumps in there. And six to there. There you go. Good boy. All right. I think we are ready for the tub. Now let's get them all cleaned up here. Oh, just wait. I'm going to comb. 
almost his. Oh, I didn't do his bum yet. What? Get some hanging down here. He did, but the tail I didn't do, so he's hanging down onto his bum. Got me. There we go. A little bit of matting in the tail. And you know, his patience is running out here. Okay, so. Okay, try this again. Actually, going to need to make some shampoo. So, I use a concentrated shampoo, so I add the shampoo to my bottles. Add some water in there. And we will be good to go. And he just hangs out there with me. Okay, buddy. I just use old Heinz uh, mustard bottles with uh, ketchup lids so that I can tip it upside down and uh, shake it up and not worry about it coming out. And I don't have to take on and off the cap all the time. It's always ready for me to go. Okay. And because uh, he was a little more grown out than some, he does take a little longer. But even with those little bit of mats in there, um, you just got to be really, you really want to make it look, you know, still nice and natural and long with the scissor cut. But you got to make sure you get all those mats out as well. So. Done. And underneath here are the keys and the bum. 
job. That's a good boy. Okay. here. And we're going to move them back to the table. As soon as I get it cleaned up. and you can always see when you give them a bath too there's a little bit of matting still in his chest area and then we'll try to get it once I give him a little bit more of a blow dry you can kind of see it clumping right here and also just in that inner inner front leg again really not too much and that was because he after he had his surgery at uh, six months there so he must be just over six then um, because obviously he's all healed up so there's a little bit of matting still in his chest as well so we'll see how that uh, what I have to do for that I mentioned to the owner that I might have to go a little shorter in that area just because I want to keep that, get those mats out. Okay, come here. All right, and we're going to be all ready for the blow dryer. There we go. Okay, good boy.
Okay. There we go. It's safer to take them with me than leave them there. I don't want him jumping off. Okay, baby. Okay, so now I'm going to give him another quick comb through. So with the uh, another with the longer scissor cut there, of course, uh, it does take a little longer to blow dry. And now we're going to find out if there's any mats left. Which I'm sure we'll find a few. Not too many. another one there but the hair is a little bit longer so I'm actually going to be cutting that one out so I don't want to bother combing it out if I don't need to. I'm just going to check this chest area because I do want to keep this area longer so it blends. Okay. I know you're excited to get off of here aren't you? Yeah. Right here too. So right, right there. It's actually quite low. So that one I'm gonna trim quite a bit shorter, just because that's where he pees as well, and that's probably why it is matted. So I'm gonna layer it kind of away from where he pees. He's still quite deep into there. It's okay, buddy. He's ready for some cuddles. Yeah, good boy. There, we got it there. Okay, and this one over here, I'm actually going to trim out. Hey. <laughs> I know, buddy. I know, it's okay. It's okay. George. Georgie, George. to see just this black on black there maybe from this angle and now the foot and all the little wispies that come off <laughs> maybe a little chin here He's kind of getting a little bit fed up with me now. He's like, I am ready for cuddles. None of this shenanigans. Okay, so we can layer that a little bit more. Pretty great where it goes to behind his shoulder. Oh, and there is his owner. So I'm just going to put him in this little baby gated area. Well, I go let the owner in. Let's see where he is. 
There he is. Okay, and then I'm just going to pause. All right, so there he is. I'm just going to grab him. Oh, oh. Probably hurt his owner, too, so he's a little excited. Oh. See her as well. All right, just going to get this all straightened up. There we go. Okay, so we are just about done. Yeah, it's taken me. Oh, hey. Now that his owner is here and he knows it, it'll make him a little bit more fidgety, as you can see. But that's not uncommon with any dog. I try to have the owner not talk kind of when I'm in the back here. So that he's not sure if she's there or not. Or not. Okay. So, so as you can see the scissor cuts are a little bit more back and forth and back and forth and they are harder to do actually than using the clippers because the clippers you kind of can use and get all to a shorter length but the clipper or the scissors you have to kind of try to blend everything and it's you know it's kind of just by eyeballing which makes it a little harder there you go I'm just going to trim that as well here just because it's laying back over his eye. Okay. So I do want to keep his eyesight clear for as long as possible there. All right, so I'm going to give him a quick blow dry, this time without covering his because he did pretty well with the other one. I want to uh, blow dry his head a little bit. There we go. There you go. It's okay. Okay. All right, and it's always hard to see on the table the full extent of everything. Some of his hair that looked like it was his ear is actually the top of his head. And he's hanging down, so. There you go, that looks better. All right. So there is our boy George. 
all finished up. He is a cuddler. Very much a cuddly dog. There we go. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching and uh, you can check out also that I have a before and after video of him as well. So you can see the uh, transformation, a uh, quick little video of that as well. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and uh, we'll see you again soon.